legislature just passed an energy bill that's getting criticized. What would you most like to fix or do differently? And so Rebecca, uh, you first. Well, given where we are with climate change and the storms and the heat outside and what we're seeing in Europe, there's a whole lot I'd like to do differently. In Massachusetts, I'd like to do two things. We have been setting terrific goals in Massachusetts. We're incredibly lucky on energy. We've been setting good goals. We are going to take, you know, we're going to keep ourselves accountable to the Paris Accords. We are trying to say 2030 is when we need to meet goals instead of 2050. But if you look at the state budget, which is where as a policy wonk, I look um, to see whether or not we are doing as a state and whether our legislature is doing what it can to actually help us meet the good goals that we are setting. And that's where we are falling short in Massachusetts. We have been cutting for the last 10 years the Department of Environmental, Conser the Department of Conservation Resources, the Department of Environmental Protection, these are the offices that oversee our hazardous waste cleanups. We have 40, we have 40 Superfund sites in Massachusetts. We do not have the staff to take care of that or to provide the oversight. We have lots of water in Western Massachusetts. The Conservation Resources Department is responsible for that. We do not have the staff to keep up with their needs and to make sure that we meet the goals that we are setting. We do not have we didn't manage even to pass what we need to do on climate readiness. So we have toxic waste in low income communities that get flooded and we have no way to clean it up and we are not making enough progress on actually preventing those disasters from happening. So what I want to do is see that we make progress on all of those, but we start by making sure that the budget reflects the goals that we are setting so we can actually achieve those goals that we make. The question was about the energy bill, right? So the Senate passed an energy bill that called for increasing our renewables by 3% a year. It's called the Renewable Portfolio Standard, or RPS. It currently goes up by 1% a year. Unless you live in Brookline, in which case your renewables went up by 25% in a single year. That's because of a bill I wrote that we passed, and your electric bill may have gone up by a dollar or two in exchange for doubling the amount of renewables in your home or your business in Brookline. But again, the Senate bill said we're going to go from 1% to 3%. The House only brought it to 2%. And that's a mistake because the Global Warming Solutions Act, our friend Frank Smyzik, I think, is in the back and he could tell you more about it. The Global Warming Solutions Act says we need an 80% reduction by 2050. And the Supreme Judicial Court said we have interim targets. 2020, 2030, and 2040 do have legally binding targets. It's unlikely we'll make our 2020 target. The Senate bill would have helped. Not only would it have increased the amount of renewables we get every year by law, it would have also removed the solar cap. Currently, people want to put solar on their homes. We know it's cost effective. We know it reduces pollution. But the utilities have managed to get a rule in that says not too much because it might upset our profits. It's a big problem. The Senate bill fixed it. The House bill didn't. Those are two of seven or eight or ten differences between the Senate and the House bill. The Senate bill was much stronger, and I'm confident that if I'm elected, I will be able to spend the next two years strengthening the House side and explaining to my colleagues in the House why the Senate got it right and we've got to follow their lead in the next legislative session. Thank you.